Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and all month I've been talking about normalizing the things that we often keep inside our own brains, uh, normalizing the things that we do that keep our businesses from growing or keep our lives from being what we really want them to be. So let's start today by talking about the two types of people in the world. First up are the people who are totally comfortable having those little red indicator numbers all over their phone. You know those people who are okay with knowing they have like 429 unread texts and 12,030 unread emails. And they've got those little numbers all over their phone that says, these are things that are not read yet. And on the other side of the spectrum are those people who look at those little red numbers and absolutely panic. If a text pops up, they clear that shit out. If a new email comes in, they respond or file and delete. Now, for those people, the only relief for those numbers, no matter how high or low they are, is to clear that shit out. And I happen to be the second kind of person, a person who dreams of inbox zero with nothing unread and everything responded to or filed. So I'm curious about you. Well, you know what? Actually, never mind, because it totally doesn't matter. Today's podcast is not about Inbox Zero. Today's podcast is all about how ruthless I am about who I allow into my email. Because after a long time of downloading lots of freebies, which I'm sure you've done too, and getting to know lots of experts and entrepreneurs and marketers and sellers, I have whittled myself down to subscribing to only two copywriters slash email marketing experts who bring the most value to my inbox. Um, These two women who I'm going to talk about today, they both have quirky personalities, both are exceptionally successful, and they openly share how they each moved into seven figures. And I'm like, yay, I love reading about this. I love transparency. I love women who are making a lot of money. I love it. Both of these women know their stuff. One of them she really gives a lot of great trainings, a lot of resources. She, nothing with her is fluffy. It's a lot of walk away and implement stuff. She sells plenty to her list and I have bought plenty from her, but she really does bring a lot of value beyond just information. The other one sells something in every single email, but she rarely gives to her audience. I've bought from her both also. Um, there's always an ask with the second one. And again, I love a good call to action, but but the relationship her, with her doesn't feel like a relationship. It feels like a uh, transactional. And the reason I'm talking about her today is because her emails had slowly started to irritate me to the point where I actually asked some of my industry insider friends who know her whether she's as snarky and rude and entitled in real life as she seems in her emails. And every single one of them said, no, she's really, she's lovely. She's funny. She's generous. And I was like, wow, then what's, what's making it so irritating for me? Why was I making what she was saying so irritating? Is it the fact that she makes millions of dollars a year? Is it a fact that she's a big deal name and I'm not? Is it, is it a fact that she's always asking and rarely giving? Is it, is it all of it? And then I thought, maybe it doesn't matter why I'm so irritated. The important thing I realized is I wasn't learning from her content anymore. And this might be because I was so distracted by my thoughts about her, or or maybe I honestly just simply learned everything I could from her. So I wanted to stop here and ask you, has this happened for you too? Is there like a podcaster whose message you used to love, but their message has shifted and doesn't necessarily resonate anymore for you? Or an author whose books you used to gobble up, but like her latest one just doesn't do it for you. And I wanted to talk about how it's okay to outgrow someone or something. It's actually very normal and you don't need to wonder if there's something wrong with them or you. Because holding on to something that's not creating value for us is a waste of our time. Who needs that? (laughs) I don't need that in my life and definitely you don't need that in your life. So I actually unsubscribed. 
and I don't miss those emails at all. I wonder, is someone or something stealing your energy? Because right now, listen, we don't have any extra time or energy to waste on things that don't serve us. So this is the first call to action I want to encourage you to take today on the podcast. I want to normalize the fact that you will outgrow many of the people that you let into your email list or into your podcast feed or onto your social media, whatever it is. And when you do, it's totally normal. Next up, I want to talk about something else that's related to the who do you let in problem because I have found that I have this habit And I actually just kind of noticed it when some of my colleagues pointed it out to me, but this habit costs me a lot of time and money and energy. And I wonder if you do this too. So does this sound like you? There's something that you're pretty good at, but you keep buying and taking trainings and workshops and certifications on that exact thing that you're already pretty good at, because maybe something will be revealed in that next training or workshop or certification that'll make you an expert in it and boom, change your life. I do this with marketing experts. I always want to learn more, 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 more about marketing from these marketing experts that I love. And self-doubt tricks me into thinking that there's an ingredient in the current marketing recipe that I'm using. And that with just one more course or workshop, I'd be able to finally make the meal, right? So when is enough enough already? This reminds me of a quote from John D. Rockefeller, who was the richest dude on the planet at the time that he said this. A reporter asked him, how much money is enough? And he replied, just a little bit more. And it's just a little bit more thinking that keeps us in an endless loop to follow a few more marketers, buy a few more courses, do a little bit more. Where does the just a little bit more end? And you know, if you've been listening to my podcast for any time at all, you know, I'm always striving to get better, to be better, to learn just a little bit more. And this is because I have some old stories about doubting what I'm really good at. So I keep buying trainings and reading books to get better at stuff I'm already good at. And you know what? Self-doubt just sucks. So I wanted to check in with you because you probably have some self-doubt too around something. Do you follow people who could be your peers and compare yourself to them? Again, following people to learn from isn't the problem. It's when you move out of learning, when the relationship isn't serving you anymore, that's when you're going to get stuck. Today's podcast is all about remembering that you already know so much. So I wanted to encourage you, implement what you know. Stop consuming and start creating. Put an offer out there. Make some money. Let's keep talking about talking about all the things that hold us back but not taking action because we're irritated or comparing ourselves or simply just over-educating ourselves is not a way to move forward. So let's normalize the fact that these things happen and take action to course correct. So how can you use what you already freaking know? How can you get back some energy by getting somebody out of your social feed or podcast list or inbox? Who can you unsubscribe, unfollow, or block? Making these changes is a small shift. I acknowledge that, but I promise a lot of small shifts done across a lot of time make a big difference. Speaking of actionable, non-fluffy resources, I wanted to offer you a freebie that I have to help you get more time and energy by making small, meaningful shifts every day. It's a three-step PDF that you can download called Master Your Time. And the thing I love about it is it's exactly what we're talking about here. Only baby steps required from you. No life overhaul needed. And you can go to www.jenliddy.com forward slash time. Now I use the tools there daily because I really want to have more energy every day and I want to do fewer things, but I want to have a better, bigger impact. And these Three things that I share there. Actually, there's four. There's a bonus thing in there for you. I wanted to share them with you. So you can go there and download that now. Thank you for showing up to my podcast. I so appreciate that you're here. I know there's a lot of podcasts that you could listen to. So I'm just appreciative that you show up. I hope this is helpful. And I will be with you again next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. 
I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.